That is going to get us all thinking. Now, who knew that antibiotics need only be taken until the day after the symptoms of the infection had actually dissipated? Next time you think about abiding by the doctor's orders, remember that studies have been done that indicate that the completion of antibiotics prescribed by GPs is flawed with inaccuracy. That's a big comment to make. So in studio with me, I've got Professor Guy Richard, who is uh, going to let us know uh, how it is that we've come to grab the wrong end of the stick, or if we have. Professor, thank you for coming in. A it's pleasure. To nice to be here. here. All right, let's start off with this, the, this, this comment that I made here, mm. that what we're saying, or what you're saying, or mm. you tell us who's come up with this, that when a doctor says, right, take this antibiotic, in fact, my, my child's just finished their five-day mm. course of antibiotics, mm. but they seem to have already started getting better mm. by the third day, mm. you're saying that I can stop. I shouldn't Absolutely. finish it. But could I go one step backwards? Please and just go to back. say that 90% of community-acquired respiratory tract infections, just the, the snotty nose and the cough and whatever, yeah. are caused by viruses. And viruses don't respond to antibiotics. So it doesn't matter how sick you are, you might be really, really ill. Yeah. But giving an antibiotic makes absolutely no difference no to difference. your outcome in terms of recovery. When you are taking the antibiotic, the longer that you take the antibiotic for, the more likely you are to predispose for resistance in the community. Now this is something that is not realized amongst general practitioners and the public there is this belief that you must finish the course and if yeah. that course is written up for 10 days if you stop it before that 10 day period you will be causing resistance but in fact it's exactly the opposite thing so therefore short courses high doses are the way to go with regard to antibiotics if it is a bacterial infection okay. and the point is that in the main we don't need antibiotics for respiratory tract infections okay so uh, let's just revisit this so what you're saying is that we sh if it's a viral infection yep. and we hear that all the time from yep. doctors and saying oh it's a viral infection but you know we'll, we'll prescribe this course of antibiotic don't listen to them don't take antibiotics if it's viral because yeah. it doesn't work it really so doesn't work is this is this is this a general understanding now is this um, global medical councils that are saying that's it this is this is how it is well we're in a crisis at the moment we're actually in the, at the end of the antibiotic era resistance now occurs in hospitals to the extent that we have organisms that we are unable to treat because of the resistance levels that they actually have but resistance starts in the community. It starts with the use of antibiotics in the community, and then it also increases with inappropriate use of antibiotics in hospitals. Okay. So at every level, we need to decrease the burden of antibiotics in the community, and particularly that means those that are unnecessary. Yeah. So those for respiratory tract infections, for example, if you go to your general practitioner, yeah. you've got bronchitis, you think, I need an antibiotic because yeah. otherwise I'm going to be ill. In fact, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control in the US, now recommends that prescribing of antibiotics for bronchitis in people who don't have emphysema should be zero. Wow. You should not be receiving antibiotics because they're viral. So what's much more important is your special cocktail that you take that makes you feel better from a symptom point of yeah, view. Yeah. So you need to take things that Cough mixture, make your, your throat, yeah, make your so throat feel a bit better, a nasal decongestant. We use nasal steroids often to decrease that post-nasal drip because the post-nasal drip is the thing that gives you the cough, gives you the sore throat, which continues on for a long period of time after you have been ill. And that often results in the GP giving you a second course of antibiotics. Absolutely. Whereas in fact, what you should merely be taking is something to decrease the inflammation in the nose, and that shouldn't be an antibiotic. I mean, I've got, I've got friends and family that you talk to, whether it be their children or themselves, yep. where they say, oh my gosh, I've just started my third course of yep. antibiotics now, and it's still not going anywhere. I mean, that's a very common occurrence and a common statement that people are making. So, so we have to educate ourselves, is Absolutely. what you're saying. Because we know we, when we go to doctors, we we put our lives and hands in the doctors. Yeah. If the doctor tells us to take it, we take yeah. it. But, but do doctors practice this? I mean, is this a, is this a thing? I mean, let's only refer to South Africa right now. I mean, do doctors take this seriously? Unfortunately, we are trying to get that message out. But unfortunately, antibiotics are still prescribed at a vastly excessive yeah. uh, amount. Yeah. And this idea of taking successive courses is particularly bad. 
it ensures that you will develop resistance in the community. Do take a note that we, we've got to separate it out. People think that they become resistant. It isn't. It is the organisms with which they are colonized that will become resistant to antibiotics in, in the future. Yeah, and it's very, very dangerous to the environment. And if you, and if you ever need that, that in antibiotic, when you seriously need it, you, you're resistant and it won't work. It may I mean, well. I, in fact, just before the interview, I was, I was reading something here where in the, in the British Parliament, they're taking this exceptionally seriously. Um, obviously, my computer's locked as usual, but I know that they, they're talking about the fact that it's, it's, it's leading to a catastrophe where people are now getting to the point where they have got, where they're saying the world could soon be cast back to the dark ages of medicine unless action is taken to tackle the growing threat of resistance to antibiotics. This is a comment by Prime Minister um, David Cameron. Well, this is co completely correct, and the South African authorities yeah. are also taking note of this. We formed a body called the South African Antimicrobial Stewardship Program. We use the term stewardship because it means you need to look after those antibiotics because we don't have any new antibiotics in the pipeline. Yeah. So the issue is that from at all levels, community and hospital, we need to decrease the use of the antibiotics. We need to use them appropriately, the right antibiotic for the right condition, the right doses. We need to administer them in the right way. And all of those factors are absolutely critical to having antibiotics into the next 10 years or so. Yeah. We are at the end of the antibiotic era at the moment. Sure. How often, uh, last question, how often should one take an antibiotic? Well, I don't think I've taken an antibiotic for the last five years. Really? I mean, I don't see uh, that there is very frequent, a very frequent need to take them in the community. If you have a skin infection, a cellulitis, for example, then yes, you might need an antibiotic in that setting. Patients who have underlying lung disease like emphysema yeah. often need an antibiotic when they have an exacerbation because those are precipitated very often by bacteria. But in the, common the cold, vast cough, majority of oh, that common cold, I must just, one word on that is the fact that we say colds and flu. Yeah. You mustn't say that because there is influenza and there are colds. And it's critical that everybody aged more than six months should take their influenza vaccine because that will prevent you from getting influenza. We have a myth in this country that the vaccine makes you sick. Yeah, but yeah. we only, in last year or the year before, 0.19% of our population took the influenza vaccine, which is shocking mm -hmm. because, in fact, that's the one that causes severe illness. It's a virus and antibiotics don't work for it, but you can prevent it. But you will still get colds. And those are caused by multiple viruses, the rhinovirus, respiratory syncytial virus, the orthomyxa virus, etc., which gives you the cold, snotty nose, sore throat, feeling grotty, yes. but you don't get influenza, which is the real baddie. Thank you for talking to us. We need to do a lot more on this, but I hope we educated you, especially on this, on this winter about antibiotics. Really opened my eyes. I hope it did for you too. Professor Guy Richards from uh, Wits University, thank you. Thank Pleasure. you very much for talking Pleasure. to us here on Morning Live.